the Word of God, which is the foundation for living. From Westminster Presbyterian Church, 20 6th Avenue Southwest, with Reverend Joseph Reed. And now, following these announcements, Reverend Reed. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. We'd like to announce that our Christian spiritual formation training has been a success. We will be offering the course again in September. This class is open to all Christians, no matter what denomination, that want to develop a closer walk with Jesus Christ. The classes are taught by Reverend Margot Coker. There will be a one-day accelerated course on Saturday, September 13th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. We will also be offering a four-week course on Wednesday, September the 10th, Tuesday, September the 16th, Tuesday, September the 23rd, and Tuesday, September 30th, and all of those classes are at 6 p.m. All classes will be held here at Westminster Presbyterian Church, located 20 6th Avenue Southwest in Birmingham. So that we make sure we have space for everyone, we're asking you to please call the church at area code 205-322-0161 to register for either of these training sessions. Thank you. Now enjoy today's sermon.
Let us pray. Lord, we ask you to help us find the solutions to our inadequacies through your love. Amen. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. One afternoon, a man came home from work to find total mayhem in his house. His three children were outside, still in their pajamas, playing in the mud with empty food boxes and wrappers strode all over the front yard. The door of his wife's car was open, as was the front door of the house. Proceeding to the entry, he found an even bigger mess. A lamp had been knocked over and the throw rug was wadded against the wall. In the front room, the TV was loudly blaring, a cartoon channel, and the family room was shrewd with toys and various items of clothing. In the kitchen, dishes filled the sink, Breakfast food was spilled on the counter. Dog food was spilled on the floor. A broken glass lay under the table and a small pile of sand was spread by the back door. He quickly headed up the stairs, stairs, stepping over the toys and more piles of clothes, looking for his wife. He was worried she may be ill, she may be sick, or that something serious had happened. He found her lounging in the bedroom, still curled in the bed in her pajamas, <coughs> reading a novel. She looked, he looked at her bewildered and asked, what happened here today? She again smiled and answered, you know, every day when you come home from work and you ask me, Honey, what in the world did you do today? <laughs> yes, was his incredulous reply. And she answered, well, today, I didn't do it. <laughs> Sometimes we do not see the inadequacies in ourselves because we are too busy looking at the perceived or imagined shortfalls in others. Please join me as I speak to you on the subject, Powers of Love, Part 9, Power Over Imperfection. Those of you who have been following the series know what I read to you was verses 9 and 10 of a 13-verse sonnet. We are wrapping it up. Probably two more verses and we'll be done. Here's the message. Listen carefully. Love has the power to produce perfection in us by transforming us from an old imperfect person, a sinful person, an offspring of Adam, a person who can't get it right for very long, to a new perfect person that God intended us to be. One word sermon. Transformation is our key word. Transformation means change. Transformation means turning around, becoming something completely that we were not before. Transformation, transformation doesn't mean partly. It doesn't mean halfway. It means completely. It means totally. It means a new creature, a new creation. Today is part nine of our series on powers of love. In this series, Paul writes to a divided church at Corinth. We encourage you to come to our Sunday school class where we have been talking about Paul and the divisions in the church at Corinth for the last several weeks as part of our Sunday school class. In the series, Paul continues to hammer on the power of love. 
So far, we've given you eight powers of love, and those of you who've been here all eight Sundays, I'll give you $100 for every one that you get right. No, I won't do that. <laughs> but we will tell you what they were. We said love is more powerful than speaking in tongues. If you're talking a lot about what God has done for you and not doing anything with your life, you are a what? Loud symbol and a what? Sounding brass. Full of sounding fury and saying what? Nothing. Nothing. We said love is more powerful than the understanding of the mysteries of life. We said love is more powerful than prophecy. We said love is more powerful than your PhD. Those of you who have one, and those of you who are full of knowledge and information, God always trumps knowledge. God always trumps information. God always trumps your education. God always trumps, no matter how smart you are, no matter what you think you know, no matter where you've been to school, God always trumps that. With what? Love. Love trumps all knowledge. Love is more powerful than faith. Though you have a faith that can move mountains, love is more powerful than your faith. Love prevails over all your possessions. I don't care how rich you are, watch this, or how poor you are. You know, some people make an art of being poor. They walk around and tell you how poor they are. If you don't believe that they will tell you how poor they are, all you got to do is ask them and they say, I'm a what? Poor person. That can be just as bad as saying I'm a rich person. In some ways, you are glorifying something perhaps that you didn't have much to do with. And in some cases, you had a lot to do with it. But neither one deserves glorification because love trumps anything that you might have. Because we all go away. Die and leave it. <laughs> Love trumps all seven of the deadly sins. If you don't know what they are? Look them up. Beginning with pride. Love sets us free. Because love, unlike the lies we tell each other from time to time, love is always what? Truthful. And you shall know the truth and it shall make you free. Love protects like a mother's love. Love is always there. You can count on it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to say anything about it. It's going to be there to protect you. Love gives us power, and this is an important one, to accept our failures. As sure as you're born, you're going to fail at something. Love gives us the power to accept our failures. We said last week that no matter who you are, where you come from, failure will be a part of your life. We learn from our failures. We learn from our mistakes. When things go wrong, God can make them right. But failure need not be the last word or have the last word. God's love found in Jesus Christ helps us overcome our failures with acceptance of the ones we cannot change Love gives us courage to change the ones we can, and it gives us something very important, the wisdom to know what? The difference. The difference. The serenity prayer is just not a little saying. It's one of the most powerful prayers that you ever pray, especially if you're being challenged in some way. Remember, these words of wisdom from a spiritual program that has transformed the lives of millions of alcoholics. Many of them have been given up for dead, had been in prison, had been in sanatoriums, had been in drunk tanks. Most of these people's lives were over until they heard these words. And acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. Whenever I'm disturbed, and this is hard, it is because I find some person, some place, some thing, some situation, some fact in my life unacceptable to me. And I can find no serenity until I accept that person, place, thing, or situation as being exactly the way it is supposed to be at that moment. Nothing, absolutely nothing, in God's world happens by mistake. If you got another version of that, let me know. 
I don't believe it. I think everything happens for a reason. Today we look at the power of love to help us overcome our imperfections. God knows, I could use the word we, but I'm going to speak for myself. God knows I have many. You can only say that. I have many imperfections. Amen? Amen. Amen. Unlike failure, our imperfections may exist before we were born. I was reading something the other day about sometimes some of our problems have occurred even while we were in the womb based on the activities sometimes of the mother or the environment or the climate that the child is nurtured in. How do I know that? Because Elizabeth's baby, Brother John, leaked in the womb. That's what the scripture says when he heard that Mary was going to have what? Not just a baby. Our Savior. So we know there's a lot of power of love even before we're born. But our failures occur sometimes before we're born. Unlike failures, our imperfections occur sometimes even before we're born. As we explore this subject, let's distinguish between perfection, goodness, and righteousness. Mark 18, Mark 10, 18 says, none is good but the Father. The young, rich young ruler had called Jesus good. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. Don't call me what? Good. None is good but the Father. Paul in Romans 3, 8, 10 through 18, says, no one is righteous. So if no one is righteous, no one is good, what is perfection? Perfection, listen to me carefully, is becoming who God created you to be. That's what perfection is. And until you become who God created you to be, you are imperfect. I don't care what you got. I don't care where you came from. I don't care how good you look. I don't care what you say. I don't care how good you can sing. I don't care what you got. You're not perfect until you become who God intended you to be. And one of the things we say in the Presbyterian Church that is always a what? Process of what? Becoming. Perfection is always a process of becoming. Then how is perfection produced? Let me share one way and then we're done. The power of love produces perfection in us by changing us from the person we used to be to the person that God created us to be. Our text says, watch this, love, 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 when perfection what? Comes, guess what happens? When perfection comes, the imperfect disappear. I didn't say it fades. I didn't say it takes time. I said, the scripture says that when what? Imperfection or when perfection comes, when perfection comes to you, when you become what God intended you to be, all your imperfections what? Disappear. They dissolve. They no longer exist. Now, does that mean that you're morally a right person? Does that mean that you get everything right? Does that mean you don't make any mistakes? Does that mean that you just all of a sudden a saint? We can put you on the white, put you in the chair, and send you on to heaven? No. Most of us are not ready anyway, right? Somebody say amen. Amen. But what it means is that when you put on the whole armor of God, guess what happens? You become who what? God intended you to be. You can say, I'm sorry now. Whereas before, it was very difficult. You can say what? Forgive me. I was wrong now. Before you can say those words, you can let the past go. I know I'm stepping on some toes. And live in the what? Present. Contrary to what we might think, Paul used a number of Old Testament scriptures to point out how imperfect we are. In Romans, he says this there is no one righteous, not even one. Then he goes on to say, there is no one who understands. Then he says, there is no one who seeks God. 
That's a strange expression. Then he says, all have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways and the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. When you think about yourself being a perfect human being in the state that you are in right now, I want you to think about this verse. And I don't think you'll be claiming perfection. Not without God as the center of your life. The only way we can achieve perfection is to be changed by the power of love that's found in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Here's the deal. It adds up to this. Only the power of Christ can change us into the perfect being that God intended us to be. Repeat after me. When perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. And the church said, Amen. And listening to the Word of God, which is the foundation for living from the Westminster Presbyterian Church, 20 6th Avenue Southwest, with Reverend Joseph Reed. And now, until next time, let the church say, Amen.